Our scripture for this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But you are not like that. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. And since we kind of set aside this day on the church calendar uh, to remember the saints who have passed, we have six this year from this church that I want to lift up their names and, and just read their names briefly this morning. Ruby Sanford, Jackie Myers, Betty Wilson, Philip Hudson, C.B. Byron Wilson, and Bill Myers. Let us pray. Father, we always give you thanks for the saints who have, who have finished their journey in this world and now are at rest with you. And so as we remember these this morning, we just pray that uh, their influence will always live in our lives and, and the impact they've made on our lives and our church will always be remembered. Father, we know they are at rest with you on this day, and we continue to live in this world. So we just pray not only for the families of those who have passed on, but we pray for each and every one of us here this morning that as we continue our struggle in this world, we will know your love and your grace in our life. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I chose the passage from 1 Peter even though I was kind of thinking about, you know, the saints of God and, and all of his people. And, and I, I know it's kind of easy for us to look at our own lives and say, you know, there's no way I could be a saint, uh, you know, not for God or with God uh, because of all the things that's happened in my life. And so I, I'm sure there's many of us who could be there this morning. But Peter said, you're a chosen people. You know, God has chosen us as his people. We're a chosen people, and he chooses us to be royal priests. Now, you may not be a royal anything else in this world, but God has said you are his royal priest so that we can share God's love with the world around us. He said you're a holy nation, but the part of that passage that I really like, he said you are God's very own possession. We belong to God. You know, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we give our lives to God. They belong to Him, and so, so we belong to God. And so, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes wonder about God choosing me as, as one of the saints. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we have to remember. To be a saint of God, you don't have to be perfect. Because we look through the Old Testament, you know, the 11th chapter of Hebrews is kind of the roll call of the saints, and, and you look back through all of those people, and so many of them had problems just like you and I have problems. I mean, you start with Abraham, and, and you go down through the prophets, they all had problems. And, and they all dealt with their own problems, but the main thing is, they walked with God. Because, you see, when God chooses you and I, he speaks into our life and cleanses us and then walks with us the rest of our life. So, so to be a saint of God, we don't have to do it by ourselves because we know that God is always with us as we live our lives in this world. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm so thankful this morning that I know God is always a presence in my life. I may not always do the thing God wants me to do, I may not always say the things that God wants me to say, but I always know that God is with me as I live my life in this world. And, and, you know, God does speak to us. He speaks to us in a lot of different ways. You know, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He would say, Look, I've spoken into your life enough. You know my voice, and you should follow the things I call you to do. And, and so Jesus is always with us in our life, and, and, and he's just saying that he speaks to us time and time and time again. 
I mean, if you go all the way back to the beginning of our Bible in the, bo in the book of Genesis, you know, in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve in a perfect situation, but they sinned against God. And yet, even after they sinned against God, God still came to the garden in the cool of the evening to walk with them and to talk with them. You know, and when God came into the garden after they had sinned, they went and hid. And, and God was saying to them, where are you? You know, and Adam said, we're hiding because we're naked. You know, and, and God already knew what they'd done in their life, just as he knows what we've done in our lives. But God still wanted to walk with them and talk with them in, in their life. And, you know, and that's kind of the way we are. God comes into our life. We don't have to be a perfect people. God wants to be in our life. God wants to walk with us and talk with us just as he did with Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, he'd come down in the cool of the evening and just walk through the garden with them and talk to them about the things that were going on. You know, a few weeks ago, Alan was preaching a sermon and he, he mentioned the story of Abraham where Abraham is sitting in the door of his tent in the hot part of the day and he looks up and he sees three men coming. And, and Abraham goes to meet them. And, you know, and, and somehow Abraham knew that these men were from God. In fact, he said, Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored me, your servant, with this visit, let me prepare some food and refresh you before you continue on your journey. And, and so Abraham went immediately and had his servants prepare food. And, you know, they brought water and everything. And... And it's kind of interesting to me as, as Abraham is serving these three men, the food and, and everything that's been brought for them, they began to talk to Abraham. You know, and, and, and one of them said to Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? Now, you know, you, you think about that. Three strangers come up, and yet they know Abraham's wife, Sarah. You know, they know her name. I mean, they say, where is your wife, Sarah? And Abraham said, oh, she's in the tent. And, and one of them said, well, I will come back a year from now. And when I come back, your wife will have a son. And, I, and, and Abraham's probably thinking, buddy, you don't know us. <laughs> because, I mean, both of them were too old to be having children. I mean, we're talking about Abraham being 90 years old and, and Sarah almost that age. And, and here's this guy saying to, to Abraham, your wife is going to have a son. And, but the funny part was that after that, now listen, in, in verse 13 it says, now we're talking about the three men and Abraham, right? It says, then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? You know, Sarah's in the tent, right? But she's standing at the door with her ear listening, you know. And, and when this guy says, she's going to have a son, well, what do you think Sarah's going to do but laugh, you know? I mean, she's way by, beyond childbearing age, and so she laughs about it, but he, he knew she laughed about it. And, of course, if you read the whole story, Sarah denies laughing, but he said, no, you laughed because he heard her, just like he hears you and I. You know, we, we think a lot of things that we do and a lot of things that we say, God doesn't know anything about it. He knows. He knows everything we do in our life. And, and so, you know, we just have to realize that God speaks into our lives sometimes. And, you know, God may not, may not speak in an audible voice that we hear with our ear. Of course, these days I don't hear much from my ear anyway. <laughs> I put my hearing aids in, but sometimes I still don't hear. But, but you know, God speaks in a way that we can hear. But, you know, so much of my life, I've always wanted God to just speak to me so I can hear it, you know, with these ears. I mean, let me know that it's really God speaking to me, and I, I don't have to have any doubts about it because I hear it with my own ears. You know, I would even be satisfied for hearing God as Elijah heard him, you know, as that whisper of God speaking into our lives. You know, the prophet Elijah was running for his life, and he went to Mount Sinai and was hiding in a cave. Mount Sinai, by the way, is the mountain of God. 
You know, that's where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, was on Mount Sinai. And, and so is the mountain of God. And here's Elijah hiding in this cave up on the mountain of God. You know, and, and God comes and speaks to Elijah, and, and all Elijah hears at first is just the voice saying, go stand in the mouth of the cave. And, and so Elijah goes to the entrance of this cave, and he stands there, and as he's standing there, first there's a, a terrible windstorm, so that it's even blowing the rocks around on the mountain. But Elijah said, God was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. And then there was a fire. You know, Elijah just was sure God would be in the fire because, after all, God spoke to Moses in the fire, right? The fire of the burning bush. And, and so Elijah was just sure God would be in the fire, but God was not in the fire. But after the fire was the still, small voice of God that spoke to Elijah and told him what he was to do with the rest of his life. And Elijah went back to become the prophet of God again. And, and so God speaks to in our, li our life much in the very same way. You know, one of my favorite passages from Scripture is, is from the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. The king had died. Isaiah had been a court prophet. He, he was associated more with the king, really, than he was with God. And, and, and the king died suddenly. And, and Isaiah was just kind of lost. He didn't know what to do. And, and so Isaiah had this tremendous vision of God when he went to the temple. You know, he went into the temple and had this vision of God high and lifted up and sitting on his throne. And Isaiah said, the train of his robe filled the temple. You know, and he heard the seraphim circling the throne of God, singing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And Isaiah saw God. But when Isaiah saw God, he saw himself. And he saw the sinfulness of his life. And he said, woe is me. For I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. And I have seen the Lord of hosts. And Isaiah saw this vision of the seraphim taking a coal off the altar of God and coming and touching his lips. And the seraphim said, Your sins are forgiven and your guilt is released. You know, that's what we want in our life. For God to say in a way that we will always remember your sins are forgiven and your guilt is released. Oh, to be in the presence of God and to hear his voice. And Isaiah said, I heard the voice of God saying, Whom shall we send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. You know, there was a time in my life when God was speaking to me. I knew He was speaking to me, but I never heard a voice. God never said, Tex, I want you to go and preach the gospel. He never said anything like that that I could hear with my ears. And yet through my pastor, through other friends in the church, as I sit in the church on Sunday morning, I knew... God was speaking to me. No doubt in my mind. And just like Isaiah, I said, Lord, I'm here. I'm ready. I'll do what you want me to do. And so God speaks to our lives. And, and God has a, has a call upon our life. You know, and Jesus said, before he finished his life in this world and before he went back to heaven he told his disciples that he would never leave them alone he said I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you he is the Holy Spirit whom leads into all truth you see the Holy Spirit comes to speak to us in our lives the things that God would have us hear the apostle Paul said the spirit of God witnesses with our spirit 
He speaks to us on the inside. We don't have to hear with these ears. So that regardless of where we have physical hearing in our life or not, God can still speak to us and speak to us in our life. But God not only speaks to us, He comes to cleanse us from the sins of our life just as He did with Isaiah. You know, just as He did with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, He forgave them for their sins and clothed them before they left the garden. And God always works in our life. God spoke to the prophet Jeremiah and he said, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Peter said, you're a chosen people. God's already decided what he wants us to do with our lives. It doesn't make any difference how young or how old we are. God already knows what our life's going to be. He said to, to the prophet Jeremiah, I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you long before you were born. And God knows us. He knows the sins of our life. He knows the things that we've done right. He knows the things that we've done wrong. You know, David was known as the man after the heart of God. And yet David sinned against God when he took another man's wife and had that man killed. You know, and the, the prophet Nathan came and confronted David with his sinfulness. And in the 51st chapter of the book of Psalms, David said, Have mercy on me, O God. Blot out the stain of my sin and wash me clean from my guilt and purify me from my sin. And I believe that's exactly what God wants to do in our lives. He wants to, you know, to blot out the stain of our sin and, and to cleanse the guilt of our sin and, and to purify us so that we can live our lives for Him. Isaiah said, It's all over. I'm doomed. I'm a sinful man and I have filthy lips and I live among a people of filthy lips. And yet God cleansed his sin so that God could come and walk with the prophet Isaiah in his life as he lived in this world and, and have the things that he wanted us to do and er, to Isaiah to do and the things he wants us to do. God can prepare our lives. You know, Adam and Eve had sinned against God in the Garden of Eden and yet God came and wanted to walk with them and talk with them and fellowship with them in the Garden of Eden. And he wants to do the same thing in our life. But sometimes there are some things he needs to take care of in our life before he can do that. He said to the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. God said, I can work in your life. He said, I can take out that stony, stubborn heart and put a new heart in your life. A heart that is responsive, a heart that is obedient to God. And God wants to work in our lives in the same way He worked in the life of Ezekiel. God not only calls us, has a has a will and a way for our life. But God comes to walk with us each and every day of our lives. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He'll always be a part of our life. You know, to know Jesus and the salvation that He died to provide for you and I. In a little bit, we're going to observe Holy Communion We'll break the bread and take of the cup. And as we do so, we remember that Jesus died on that cross. His body was broken and His blood was spilled so that we can be called the children of God. God's very own possession. You know, and to walk with God in our life, there's a, there's a great story in the Old Testament I mean, it takes about two verses in the book of Genesis. You know, it's the, it's the story of uh, Enoch. Some of you have heard the, the name Enoch. 
Well, Enoch was a man who walked with God. And, and in Genesis chapter 5, it says, After the birth of Methuselah, who was the son of Enoch, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. And then one day he disappeared because God took him. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but just think about this. You know, you're walking along in your life, and God's walking with you, and, you know, one day Enoch and God are walking down the trails of Israel, and, and God just looks at Enoch and just says, you know, why don't you just go home with me today? Why don't you just go home with me today? And guess what? Enoch went. And he wasn't seen in this world anymore. Now, that's the trivia question for you today. And I always remember this trivia question. Who died and went to heaven? Uh, not who died. Who went to heaven without dying? Enoch did. Because Enoch went with God. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to go through the struggles of death. He just went with God. I want to walk in my life with God so that when the time comes and, and God says, text, why don't you just go home with me today? I'm going to say, God, I'm ready. Take me on. And I don't want to have to go to some hospital and die with a doctor looking at me. I'd just soon go with God. You know, God wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be a part of my life. He wants to walk with us as we live our lives in this world. You know, if you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is always traveling with those disciples. You know, the twelve... Everywhere he goes, they go with him. You know, he, he just walks with them from day to day. They, they didn't have a car, didn't have a bus. They walked everywhere they went. And as they walked, they talked. Oh, sometimes the disciples argued about who was the greatest. You know, sometimes they argued about stupid things like we do. But they were always with Jesus. I just want to be with Jesus. You know, I don't know about you, but that's, you know, that's what I want out of my life. I just, I just want to be with Jesus in, in the life I live in this world. And, and, you know, when Jesus, after his death, on that Sunday after he died, he was resurrected, and, and he appeared to two disciples. They were going from Jerusalem down to Emmaus. Now, that's a journey of about 12 miles. I've been there. I know how far it is from Jerusalem down to Emmaus. It's about 12 miles, and they were walking down the road, and all of a sudden, Jesus was walking with them. And he began to talk to them about the Scriptures. You know, and they finally got to the little town of Emmaus, and they went to their home, and they invited Jesus in. They didn't know who he was. But when he sat down at the table with them, and took a piece of bread and broke it. A loaf very similar to that. And he took that bread and he broke it. And when he did, they noticed his hands. And they knew immediately who he was. Now, he'd been dead. They knew that. But now he was alive again. And when we receive the bread this morning in communion, it's the broken body of Christ. And we remember that his body was given for us. God wants to walk with you this morning. Not just today, but for the rest of your life. And there may be some things he may have to do in your life before that can happen. But as we come and receive the elements of communion, the body that was broken, the blood that was shed, it's the body and blood of Christ. And after you have received the body and the blood, there will be room at the altar for you to spend some time in prayer. You know, maybe you just need to say to God, okay, God, there's some things you need to clean up in my life, and I'm ready for you to do that. Or maybe the God, God will tell you there's some things he needs to do in your life. Will you be ready for him to do that? Let us pray.
Father, speak to us this morning. Speak to the heart that's buried deep within us. Speak in the way that we can hear, even though sometimes we wonder, did we really hear? Speak in a way that we will know and understand that you're in the midst of our lives. For it's in Christ's name we pray.